Well, hey folks, welcome back to the New Hampshire Cabin Project. A while ago, I posted a video titled, How to Outfit a Cabin on the Cheap. And that's where I was demonstrating that if a person wants to outfit a place, they can do so with little to no investment, simply by picking up an old junk camper, salvaging the components out of it. Not long ago, I tore the gas refrigerator and the water tank and a whole bunch of other goodies out of an old Shasta. I'm going to install them in the cabin here. I'm going to walk you through the process, show you how I'm going about it. I'm going to bring a few more creature comforts into this old shack and do it, like I said, with little to no investment. So let's get started. Now, even though this camper was built back in the 1970s, the gas fridge is still in perfect working order. Since it was built into the camper, only the door has a finished look and the rest looks like an ugly piece of machinery. I'll build a nice rustic cabinet around it and turn it into a little gem. <laughs> She'll be styling after that. So what I picked up here was a five foot rubber hose at Tractor Supply. It comes in a container like this. As the regulator all attached and this fits directly onto the tank. It comes in many different ways, but what I needed was a 3 8 female flared fitting on this end. Because that is what I need to attach to the intake of the refrigerator. Right now I'm just hooking up the refrigerator on a temporary basis. It's going to have its own tank and its own regulator. Eventually, I'm going to be redoing all of the copper lines on the camp. I'm going to come up through the floor with some copper, then there'll be a shut off, then that rubber hose will be connected to that. There will only be one regulator for the whole camp. I just wanted to clarify that. I don't want people to think that you have a tank with a regulator and then it comes up and then you need another regulator for the refrigerator. It's only one regulator. But right now, again, the fridge is going to be hooked to its own separate tank. And since I'm working in a tight space behind the fridge and in poor lighting, I just want to show you a little bit more information outside where you can see what I'm working with. I showed that the hose I bought had a 3 8 female flared fitting. You can buy them in all different types of fittings. But what I bought was the 3 8 female flare because on the back side of the refrigerator, there's a stub just like this that's 3 8 male flared. And it's called flared fitting because you can see it's, it's like a cone shape here. There are other types of copper fittings that takes nuts like this, but that's not what we're working with. That's a compression fitting. For this gas, we are working with the flared fitting. On the copper line, later on, I will flare it out like that, and it will meet that flared fitting perfectly. And then it'll get screwed on. Most plumbers just go ahead and connect their line to it without putting any type of sealant or Teflon tape to the threads. But the way that I was shown many years ago was to put one wrap of Teflon tape. It served me well, so that's what I'm going to continue to do so. And on the refrigerator, you can see that when it was uh, connected at the factory, there is Teflon tape on the threads. I'll take one wrap of Teflon tape, and I wrap it in a clockwise position. And I do that because the threads screw on in a clockwise position. If you wrap it counterclockwise and then screw the nut on, it's going to unravel your tape, and you will have a very poor connection. Just want to show you that up close. See the back of the refrigerator here has this 3 8 male fitting. That's where the gas comes into the fridge, and this matches it perfectly. Come on to here and make sure you're in a nice straight approach so that will screw on without any effort. When you're screwing this on, you want to make sure you're not cross-threaded. If you have to apply a lot of effort, 
then you might want to back it off and check and make sure you're not cross-threaded because these grass threads are really soft. And I'm doing most of this by hand. So with one wrench holding that steady, I'm going to get in here with another one and cinch it down. I just made all the connections. Now I'm going to check it for leaks. And I'll show you how I'm going to do that. I just have a little bit of soapy water in here. Just some dish soap. I'm going to apply that onto the fittings. This fitting too, just in case I torqued something. I'm going to observe it. If there was a leak, it would be blowing bubbles. It's going to blow bubbles in the same fashion as those little plastic hoops that you used to dip into the bubble solution and blow through it when you were a kid. But everything looks good. I'm going to leave it for a couple of minutes and check it again. I'm going to check it at the tank too. So there's a little refrigerator cabinet so far. I still need to put a couple of pine boards, one there and one on top, and then another vent strip. The gas burner creates a bit of heat that you have to allow to escape. But it's all fired up. It's doing a great job. It's fully stocked, doing a great job keeping everything nice and cold. So far, so good, and it's going to be a real nice addition to the ice box. But once the weather gets cold outside, we won't even need to have this in operation because we allow the cold air from outside into the ice box, and that thing works awesome. If you've followed my channel for a while, you already know that I still get my water the old-fashioned way. I drop an old cowboy kettle into a well that's a few hundred years old and then carry the water back to the cabin by hand. Lots of folks have suggested that I dig a trench and I plumb up the cabin the proper way. Well, if you want to come here and dig a trench a hundred yards long in New Hampshire granite, you're welcome to do so and I'll certainly lay a pipe in it. <laughs> But for now, I'm going to carry on the way that we've always done it here. My dad carried water back to this camp till he was well into his 70s. I don't plan on quitting at 54. Now, the way that I rigged up my shower here that you've seen with that two and a half gallon bottle, that works fantastic. I'm not going to change a thing. There's no pump or burner or anything that I have to worry about failing. I'm going to employ a similar process for the kitchen sink. All my life we've washed our hands here in the sink with two dish pans. It was certainly better than not washing your hands at all, <laughs> but it wasn't the best process. So I'm going to take this little uh, water tank here. I'm going to set it up vertically up in the attic. I'm going to run a gravity feed line down to the sink. I could use the 12 volt pump that I got. There's a million different ways that I can approach this and pressurize it and put a water heater and all of that. I don't need any of it. I like to live simple and cheap. So all I want to do is be able to have clean running water at the sink to wash my hands with. If I feel I need to have something pressurized, then I will employ the 12 volt pump to the line. But I don't plan to do so. I cut one end off the tank because I intend to use it in the vertical position and fill it with buckets rather than electric pumps. The water will exit the bottom of the tank and gravity feed to the kitchen sink. This will not only be a more convenient and sanitary method of washing our hands, but it'll free up some valuable space in the kitchen where water used to be stored. We are solving many problems with this one simple task. This project is long overdue. I love this stuff.
PEX tubing, awesome to work with. Now here is this little stand that I built for the tank because the tank's going to be vertical. There's going to be a lot of pressure against the side walls with 20 gallons of water in it. I was going to build a cover for it, but then I found that this dish pan seated really nice in the top of the tank. When we were cleaning out the cabinets at the homestead, I came across this thing here. It's got a really fine mesh on it, and I don't know if it came out of an old flour sifter or what. But I held on to it, and then I cut a hole in the dish pan so that fits in there nice and tight. I love it. It's like it was all made to go together. Just like it was made for it. I think this is going to work awesome. Let's go downstairs, see if we have any leaks. Give it a go. Well, it looks like everything has gone according to plan. There were no leaks in the pipe. And the water pressure is plenty sufficient for what I want it for. And I am just thrilled that I no longer have to have buckets of water stored here in the kitchen. This is just fantastic. Two more creature comforts added to the cabin with little to no cost at all. And I'm thrilled with that. So I want to wrap it up for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll have more cabin projects coming up soon. So all the best to you, and God bless. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did and you'd like to see more of the cabin life, please click the subscribe button so that you can follow along with future updates. All the best to you, and God bless.